Hello, and welcome to my latest podcast. Uh, I've got no idea what number we're up to. I probably should have done some research into my own work. But this is kind of a um, spare of the moment thing that I just thought I, w- I would throw together. A, um, just to get some thoughts out of me noggin. Uh, and also, just to try a few um, different ways of um, doing these. So, I think one of the things that puts me off almost doing anything uh, is sometimes... Once and you've done a few things like these, like video editing and audio editing, um, you do start realizing how much work is involved in the whole process. So sometimes I kind of like talk myself out of it because I'm like, oh God, I'm gonna have to set up those microphones. I'm gonna have to edit this. I'm gonna have to sync it all up together again afterwards, blah, blah, blah. If you've um, done any of that, uh, you're late. And if you haven't, have a go. It's fun. I'm sure I've sold it. Um, so what I'm doing today is I'm just using the audio from the camera. I do have um, what's called a Rode VideoMic Pro. Uh, It's a Lumix um, Panasonic FC2000 and I'm using my Zoom H4n um, with a Rode um, Lavalier mic which is just like a lapel mic I've clipped here. Rather than setting up Logic, having to worry about doing all that with a computer and hopefully um, this is also like a portable thing so I could I could essentially do these anywhere. Uh, So uh, you actually join me now in our lovely green retreat, um, which we had built in the garden. Uh, I feel really, really fortunate to have this space and hopefully I'm going to be doing some more podcasts from here. I've noticed there's like a weird lilt to every sentence. I'm going up and I'm coming down. Tension, resolution. Okay. So what I'd like to talk about, and actually like I've made some notes. I mean, you know, uh, so it's kind of a bit of a stream of consciousness, but, um, it's a stream of consciousness maybe I had earlier on, and now um, I'm going to relay it to you um, with a further stream of consciousness, further stream of consciousness, but with some pointers. So I just thought I would just talk um, about something that I see all the time on my Facebook feed, and you may see on yours, and I think we're starting to see it more and more in real life. Um, maybe we always have done. Uh, and I just want to talk a bit about people's opinions, um, different sides they're on, like right, left, all of that stuff, red, blue, um, and also contradictions. So I'm going to call this, uh, (laughs) I've written it down, so you know, I wasn't going to call it this, but that's just what it starts with at the top. So it's going to be called Opinions, Sides, Contradictions. Uh, So, you know, I mean, I've been kind of like thinking about this stuff uh, for years really, but uh, what has really brought it to my attention uh, was last night um, I watched loads of YouTube videos uh, and they were set in um, Berkeley uh, on the uni campuses there um, and also in Portland, Oregon. Um, many of these videos, you know, you can just kind of um, search on um, YouTube, yeah, just type in Berkeley, Berkeley campus problems probably or Antifa and Berkeley. Um, Portland, Oregon, uh, there's loads, um, but you know, obviously I don't have unlimited time, so uh, I only watched a few of them, uh, and they're quite disturbing actually. So they start in about 2017, um, the ones I watched, so I think they were like the end of 2017, uh, those were the Berkeley ones, and then there was one at the start of 2018, and they go all the way up to uh, the end of 2018. And the first thing uh, that I noticed was it's really, really mental out in the States at the minute in um, certain parts, like particularly Portland, Oregon and Berkeley. I don't know if that's indicative of other parts of America, but it's to, um, it's to a degree that we don't have in this country, I don't think. Uh, we have problems and we have loads of um, protests and kind of counter protests and there are some problems but I just don't think to the same degree that they are certainly in Portland. I mean it was almost a bit like civil war it seemed to me and uh, the police they just uh, they don't know what to do I don't think because you know you have civilians that have kind of, that have riot shields and they have pepper spray um, so I suppose from the police's point of view you know it's like do they go in and have like a full-on riot or do they just let people like go at it? Uh, and it seems they opt for the latter, although maybe they probably should help a bit more. But, you know, I mean, they're probably understaffed, aren't they? Uh, so 
kind of what I wanted to talk about really was just the extremes on both sides. I'm, I'm just checking my hands are in shot there. Yeah, so the um, extremes of both sides seem, seem to me um, that they're almost exactly the same, just two sides of the same coin. Um, both saying really, really different things, but doing it all in the same way and using the same methods. And often things that they, things that, or opinions or behaviors that they would consider anathema um, in the other side, in their enemy, uh, like if they do it, it's okay. And that seems like crazy to me, and I will come on to that, uh, and that's where the contradiction side comes into it. But yeah, it's like, they'll off, you know, so even like uh, the basic thing of being anti-hate and anti-violence, and then using violence to stop that, it just seems like crazy to me. And it's almost like we pile on more hate rather than um, trying something else. You know, I'm not saying that I have the answers, but it seems weird to me that the answer to hate is more hate or the answer to violence is more violence. I mean, sometimes that's true, uh, like in a war or, um, I don't know, like if someone's attacking you or your family, and I will come on to that again, yeah, because there's loads of contradictions. Like if somebody attacks you, are you entitled to defend yourself? Um, so yeah, uh, I'm just going to check my notes and just see where I'm going because I've kind of, you know, like I've already, I've already gone off piste. I might have to edit this bit out. So yeah, like you might see like an edit here. So we're back from uh, my brain meandering. So yeah, anyway, uh, long story short, what I find weird is one side will see opinions or behaviors in the other um, that they consider anathema but then if they do them it's okay uh, and the thing that I um, sometimes can't wrap my head around is how people don't see that how they don't see the contradiction and they don't see the cognitive dissonance um, and when you watch these videos like you see so much stuff. So, uh, for instance, um, one of the things I saw um, is there's an Antifa um, group and they pepper spray this guy. So then this guy kind of um, punches them, um, you know, and I think he's a stronger guy. Um, and yet um, he ends up kind of like beating, beating off. Uh, you know, he ends up fending off um, a few of the people that are trying to attack him and then they sort of turn on him and say that he's really violent and he's really angry and I think one of the people that was um, pepper spraying him turns out to be a woman and they sort of say that he's a woman beater and stuff and I was just thinking to myself well if somebody pepper sprays you are, are you allowed to hit them back and if you do does that mean you're violent uh, if, if one of those people happens to be a woman does does that mean that you're um, like a woman hating misogynist. Certainly if they have a mask on, like, and you don't know. Now I'm aware that that probably looks like I'm sort of taking the side of the people that would be on the right, um, and I'm not at all. Um, because you see stuff, you know, from the other side, you know, where you see, you know, people, you know, sort of facing up against the Antifa uh, and almost looking for a fight. And I think that's my biggest um, problem with it is it seems like a bunch of people who are angry just looking to fight somebody else. It almost seems like the opinion is irrelevant. Now, I'm aware that this is gonna sound like uh, the Trump thing where he said, yeah, there's kind of good and bad on both sides. Um, and whilst I didn't ever think that I would be quoting him, uh, I think there is some truth in that, that there are people who would you would consider being on the right or the conservative in this country or um, Republican in America that are really, really good people that are probably just trying to be, I don't know, you know, look, proud Americans, um, proud of their economy, you know, all of those kind of things. And, and they're probably just interested, you know, in kind of making sure their families are well fed. Uh, you know, I mean, if you don't think like other people like that exist and you don't think that people vote conservative or um, vote Republican now for decent reasons, then I think maybe there's a problem. 
in the way that you process things because there are some people who um, just happen to lean that way politically you know but you could probably probably sit down with them and they would be really really lovely people um, uh, the same uh, as in the UK uh, with Brexit you know like if you think that you can um, justifiably hate anybody that voted leave and they're all just kind of you know they're all just Nazis or they hate immigrants um, I mean in my opinion it's a ludicrous thing to have because yeah there were people who undoubtedly voted for those reasons but to claim it's the majority uh, considering there are many people that I know and perhaps many people that you know uh, that vote these ways are we saying that we just hate them and they're all just idiots um, and if it is the case what do we do about that I mean like you can't have some kind of like civil war which seems to be what's starting to happen you you're having increasing issues with this kind of right left leave remain you know these two um, diametrically opposed things that don't realize the similarities and also don't realize the fact that we're all connected and we're all human beings and what runs through us is the same yeah sorry I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna edit out this bit again I was kind of going off on a brief sojourn into somewhere else that I wasn't intending to um, but the basic point that I'm making is that we have these two sides that seem to have completely different opinions on things but use exactly the same ways of expressing them um, and when you watch these videos and you have these fights uh, it's almost like people are going Op opinion my opinion your, opi your opinion my opinion what I've got free speech but I can't listen to your opinion yeah but we don't want your free speech that's my opinion and like when you watch it and you watch a lot of these it seems like some weird entity maybe some kind of virus or some kind of like disease that's having a fight with itself and it's gone faulty it's kind of like watching a computer program that can't quite add up and it's kind of going dip, 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 dip. or like when you watch one of these kind of cartoons or um, films you know with a robot that's programmed to hate and then it maybe sees another robot and it falls in love and it's kind of like K kill kill I love you what can't compute <laughs> and the head just explodes um, and that just seems to be what it's like where you know like you say oh, we hate violence but we're going to use violence to shut you down um, you're a snowflake and you're always offended but then what you say to me in return offends me and there's this thing with like Pierce Morgan uh, with the bloody uh, uh, the Greg's ve vegan sausage roll he's always kind of going on about that you know like uh, these snowflakes and everyone is offended yet he seems to be offended by everything you know and that's as much on the right as is the left you know I mean they use the word snowflake but you know I mean like some of those people like you know are offended like by anything um, and I think again there's time for calm reason discussion in the middle where you can you can like disagree with somebody but you've got to use a different method to express that disagreement if your method is the same as the person that you um, disagree with then you're going to run into problems and I think that's true like um, of, of just everything you know um, and it's true in nature like if you have two opposing forces you, you know, you're gonna have a massive explosion um, was it like Bruce Lee there's like be like water I mean if you're calm and peaceful you can you know even if there's an obstruction in the way you can calmly kind of go around it you know um, I mean, maybe you could sort of take that further like you could sort of drown the rock you know but that's not what I'm insinuating uh, and also you know I'm aware that out of context um, that could sound like you know I'm advocating violence on the former pro wrestler the rock and I'm not you know it's a water analogy but yeah so moving around obstacles or trying a different approach if you're approaching it in the same way as the people that you're fighting it's like everything that you say could be said against you and uh, the broken robot like analogy you know it kind of carries on further because sometimes I love watching people's face where they try to rationalize why they're different and they go oh yeah but I can feel this way because what I'm saying is different or I'm different 
And what they're almost always saying, you know, and I say they, you know, I'm, I'm sure that I do it, is we're almost always saying, yeah, but it's my opinion. So my opinion must be more right. And I think all of us would do well to sit down and think of our opinions and try to attack them. Uh, and then if we can actually sustain that, um, so if it stands up to the scrutiny of maybe others or our own opinion, which is why discussion is so important, which is with, I'm just talking to a camera, but obviously feel free to comment, um, is when you sound out these things, if somebody can shut you down and go, well, actually, well, not shut you down. If somebody can offer like an alternate view peacefully and calmly, we go, okay, well, you may think that, but what about this? Uh, I recently watched some amazing documentaries. Uh, one was called White Power, I think, and one was called Jihad. And it was just, it, uh, it was just crazy to watch these people's brains, like uh, these Nazis, um, talking to, uh, I think the lady comes from, like, Norway, I think, um, but has uh, heritage from other parts of the world. So she is almost everything that these kind of Nazis should hate and probably on some level um, think they do. So um, she's a Muslim, um, she has brown skin, uh, and you know, she's on the left, um, she's like a liberal. Uh, and what's fascinating is hearing them spew their kind of odious, um, odious views, and they are odious views, I'm not saying they're not. You know, anybody that preaches hate, you know, in my opinion, uh, like needs to be addressed in a calm way. But anyway, yeah, so how she addresses it is she is calm and she just peacefully tries to talk to these people uh, and after they will say something really hateful, so they um, use terms like mud skin and um, shit skin and stuff and she kind of reads out some of the hate uh, that she's received and you can see them squirming uncomfortably, trying to ration it in their brain like, so I've, so I've used that language, but I'm talking to you and I really like you, so I can't quite compute. And she actually says to some of them, you know, would you see me kicked out of the country? And they're like, well, no, because we're friends. So just befriending them and trying a different approach seems to have genuinely changed some people's opinion. Now, it is probably worth mentioning her that she's a very attractive lady, which I'm sure um, played into it, but I would like to believe that even if she was somebody that didn't have the um, accepted appearance of beauty, because I'm aware that is also arbitrary and um, and is subjective, um, then she would have had the same result. You know, like I would like to think a calm, peace, peaceful guy, maybe someone like me, making this video now or talking to other people that you know I might disagree with. Um, we can come to some commonality and we can look at the things that f uh, flow through all of us that unite us rather than spending so much time looking at, at the things that we hate. Um, and that kind of links on to uh, like Facebook uh, and the way that we communicate like daily with each other and how we get drawn, you know, it happens to me loads, you get drawn into these, cra these crazy like debates uh, where, you know, again, it's like that kind of broken robot opinion. Yeah, but my opinion, you know, as a guy, I'm not going to name him, but he's on my own Facebook that always posts things, uh, that I think are designed to attract negative attention. So he'll say something about like straight white men, uh, and then, you know, um, loads of straight white men start, start then kind of commenting and going, okay, well, that's not me or, you know, and I mean, people moan about like oh, that not all men thing, but you could just put some, if you just put some in front of that, some men, some women, some um, cis people, rather than just men, women, cis people, it's lumping everybody in together that everybody seems to disagree with. And everybody puts so much effort into this, okay, well, that doesn't mean me. Like, you know, it's as much, we have to accept that what we say will have consequences. We can't just think that we speak so everybody must listen and then they, um, you know, like it's um, 
we speak with impunity and it's beyond reproach and you you know you say something so therefore people must listen and they must agree and if they don't they're a prick and we can hate them i mean if that is your view of communication almost all of the um books uh and things that i've read on wisdom you know says that isn't the way to behave but it seems that that is the way that we are kind of like behaving more and more we're just talking over each other um interrupting not letting people finish their points or seeing things there that weren't there in the first place. So um, as a little example, I've started to realise that specificity is really, really important. So being specific about things, because you can say something specific and it have objective truth, but that could then go off uh, and you could find other things about that thing or that person that maybe are more open to subjectivity yeah so as an example i think it was a couple of weeks ago i um i just put up a post that was basically saying that you know even though like i didn't agree with Theresa may i thought that she was a strong woman okay so you'd think people that see themselves more on the left would see that as a good thing because you know uh, we do want strong women and I'm not saying strong as in powerful but um, somebody that um, sticks to their guns you know kind of sticks through like difficult um, times okay now that doesn't ha you know that doesn't mean that you have to agree with that person so you could objectively say Theresa May is a strong woman okay uh, and that have some verisimilitude okay but then uh, you could also say, but I don't agree with what she did to the police force. Okay, maybe some people will agree with you on that. Maybe um, some people won't. But the two things, saying that she's a strong woman, but you sort of didn't like disagree what she did to the police force, like um, they can both exist and, and, be, um, and be true or, um, at least have some veracity like to them they don't kind of have to defeat each other so it isn't that because you hate what she did to the police force and maybe you know other areas of the country I mean I think she's you know kind of screwed up a lot right but that doesn't mean that she's not a strong woman like the two things are oh, they're not mutually exclusive okay so yeah so that's what I'm trying to say so I am um, got confused there in my own point but like uh, do you get what I mean where the two things can exist uh, and that doesn't make a contradiction. So what was happening is on my post, I just put that. I think she's a, she's a strong woman and she has um, staying power um, so much more than someone like David Cameron, who I personally think uh, is a bit of a twit. That's uh, a soft way of putting it. And as soon as things got tough, he was out. I don't think that's admirable, you know. I don't like him, I don't like what Theresa May has done, but all I'm saying is at least I admire the fact that she's stuck around to try to do it, uh, uh, and also try to do a job that probably no one else wants. She probably got the job because no one else wants it, okay? I mean, it's kind of like career suicide, really. Even if um, Corbyn was there to take over now, I think it would be like career, career suicide for him, whoever's doing this, because, it isn't going to be that everybody just suddenly agrees. Go, yep, yeah, you're doing it right, mate. Brilliant. We're, you know, we're all on board. You could, you know, I mean, yes, I'm open to the fact that do some things then negate any positive um, view that you could have of somebody. So uh, you could say, uh, I don't know, um, Jeffrey Dahmer uh, was really charismatic, okay? But, you know, he did kill people. So is that, is mentioning that he was charismatic, um, is that relevant and should you just shut up and just not mention it? So I'm aware that maybe she may have gone too far to the point where making like a positive um, point about her is bad. Um, making, I don't know, you know, Starling kind of may have been an amazing dinner host, but you know, like it doesn't um, negate the fact that he also did a lot of shit. So, but you know, I mean, I'm sure there's some people like her that disagree with that. 
yeah but can 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 we make observations about people um, or about anything on Facebook or in a discussion that we could just stick on that one specific thing and then not so you know um, using the um, Theresa May example again I just said that I thought that she was a strong woman then everyone was you know like I got kind of you know sort of a wave of antipathy really from um, people saying oh she's this she's that and the other you know and a lot of the stuff like I did agree with but it seems that we've kind of lost our minds like you can't make a point that isn't in any way in the middle or like a balance without it being some huge kind of like argument where it's kind of right left um like red blue I almost went blue left and that would have totally blown everyone's minds but um or at least mine uh you know like so you can't say I think that she's a strong woman without then being seen as some kind of right-wing Tory. You can't say that you think maybe capitalism works without being like a heartless um, patriarchal dick, uh, you know. And maybe you know, maybe get like capitalism. But you know, I mean, I don't want to get into a kind of socialism versus like cash socialism versus capitalism kind of a discussion here. Uh, you know, because again, that's two seemingly like diametrically opposed camps that one, um, for one to succeed, needs to like obliterate the other. And that seems to be the way that we view everything, rather than going, maybe there's elements of all of this that we could fit together, you know, or maybe like a Venn diagram, like you have extreme right, extreme left. Now, I personally think that uh, extreme right is something that we don't want, um, you know, making powerful uh, decisions for us. Maybe some people think that's what um, Trump is. I don't know like enough about him or his views and his policies uh, to say that. Um, but you know, I think a lot of reasonable people think that we don't want people on the extreme right making decisions um, about humanity, okay? And there are some people on the extreme um, on the extreme left, who again, I don't think should be making decisions um, about humanity. And I say this uh, from somebody that used to be very left, and then just seeing it happen more and more, that as soon as somebody even steps out of line slightly, they're then, um, you know, um, they're just pounced on and they're denigrated. Um, and it's not helpful for anybody but, uh, because, you know, as, as I'm saying in the whole thing, you can have a view that may lean that way, but, but you're still fundamentally more on the left. Um, but yeah, it's, so all, all of these Antifa people, people that would rather go out and smash somebody up than at least have a dialogue with somebody. Personally, I, I don't want um, deciding things for me or, you know, um, humanity in general yeah they certainly don't speak for me all of these people in Antifa um, like the you know um, but again on the extreme ends so you have extreme right extreme left um, right left I don't know you know because you're watching this uh, but maybe my confusion over it is the confusion we're all feeling um, you know kind of who is who anymore uh, it just seems like uh, you know, like people sort of make a decision on the surface, like, I like red, I like blue. And then they just basically fight and, and they just kind of hate each other, yeah? Uh, and are, are the opinions underneath actually what's important or is it this primary evolutionary driver to want to be in a tribe and fuck up the other tribe rather than kind of going okay well I do have to share the world with those people so let's see what they're all about you know like I just think it's kind of like Lord of the Flies you know and, and I'm pretty sure that that book was written like as a warning or at least saying you know th this could happen or uh, perhaps like does happen yeah so anyway like you you know you, you may have extreme left and extreme right okay so 
although for me that's my extreme right that's my extreme left but okay so we'll go right left uh and i don't think e either of those views in my opinion like are admirable and then you kind of move more like towards the middle maybe it's like a venn diagram uh right left and there's like a venn diagram in the middle um some of those things overlap some of them don't uh and maybe the point of a civilized society is trying to encourage more people to exist in that middle ground uh, and to foster a healthy middle ground has to be dialogue it has to be uh, not instantly jumping to you know this kind of like you're with us or against us I even had um, this Facebook discussion where somebody was saying that I was part of the problem because I wouldn't get on board with the whole punch the Nazis thing so therefore I so I was kind of with them I mean that's ridiculous like um, and actually what's weird is some of the people saying that probably hated when I think was it George Bush George, George Walker Bush said um, uh, you're either with us or against us in the fight on terrorism and everyone said oh that's really bad you know like I mean sort of opposing um, people you know like against each other and you know yet the, yet people that probably thought that and again we're back to contradictions like uh, the broken robot people that thought that are actually doing that and it just seems crazy that they don't just sit back and think about it but I bet you know if you're somebody that thinks um, we should punch Nazis and if you're not on board with that then you're part of the problem uh, you know because there's that quote about you know like um, if you see uh, if you see oppression and you, and, and you don't stand up for it you're on the side of the oppressor or something so everybody goes to the um, extreme end of it um, but yeah so if you're not on board with the whole punch Nazis thing you know then you're um, part of the problem and you're siding with the oppressor if that's what you believe you're using the exact same argument that you probably hated from George Bush saying you're either with us or against us um, you know like it's you know it's just ridiculous uh, you know everything is about balance and everything is about shades of grey um, and existing in the middle you know and uh, the thing is is like we do have to share this world with the other people maybe that's the biggest shock um, uh, with the British referendum and with the American election is that like we do have to share our planet with these people yeah uh, whatever your like view is if you're staunchly remain staunchly leave like you know you have to live with the other side uh, and, there, and there may be people in your family uh, maybe people in your community um, and it is possible to love somebody that voted leave if you'll remain okay uh, that is possible um, as I said before they're not mutually exclusive um, and you can like one aspect and it have some truth and then not like another aspect of that person and that have some truth for you and now I'm aware that even the word truth is subjective and there's relative truth but let's say for argument's sake using the uh, Theresa May example that we all we all objectively agree that she's a strong woman then that could have some truth and then you uh, could also say that you think that she has decimated the police force and you could look at the data and you could go that seems objectively true okay but again I'm aware that there are many people that would probably question both of those assertions uh, now the police force one is probably like a harder one uh, I personally think uh, she didn't do good and most of the people that I know that are in the police or have views on the police think that she um, did a complete hatchet job okay but what about the strong woman one if you don't like her and don't think she's a strong woman then I would ask what what um, defines a strong woman then what is strength is strength standing up in the face of adversity um, is it sticking around when things are tough I, I think we would all agree that that is strength 
So you can, um, you can dislike somebody, but think they are a strong person. Um, so yeah, uh, I think I'm only gonna try to engage in conversations with people where you, you, so that's in real life also on Facebook, where you feel that you can make those assertions and have that level of conversation and not just say, okay, well, um, I think Theresa May is a strong woman. And then everyone go, oh, you're a prick, she's this, she's that. You know, like, uh, because often it isn't even the point you're making and they're making their own points. It's almost like they want to be heard. Yeah, um, and you know, uh, that's gonna link onto something else that um, I wanted her to say in a minute. Uh, this is a whole stream of consciousness. We're already 38 minutes in, okay. So I'm only gonna have conversations f uh, from now on with um, people in the real world and on social media world that uh, can have that level of conversation where you can make a specific point and you can discuss that without just kind of completely um, sending um, a wave of, of antipathy and negativity towards you when it isn't even what you were saying and it's not what you're intending. Uh, specificity in a discussion, I'm realizing more and more, is so important because otherwise you spend hours just talking about stuff that sometimes you're not even talking about and I've and I've seen it myself you know when I've read over things that I've been talking about with other people we're actually in agreement we're sometimes making the same point but like because you're engaged in a sort of combative mentality like we don't see it okay and I think that that so for instance at the open mic night last night I was talking to this chap um you know, and it was kind of a light-hearted uh, discussion, you know, just about kind of uh, the way the uh, world is, right? Which I'm aware kind of sounds like a contradiction itself, but you know, like, it's fairly light-hearted, like, at the bar. And I just asked him uh, if he was aware of um, what they call it behavioral economics, as opposed uh, to regular economics, where um, regular economics um, assumes that we're rational, and we and we make rational um, choices. And then behavioral economics, um, you know, is about like the kind of human as opposed to the econ where, you know, uh, we're not rational, okay? You know, um, um, some of us just, you know, sit, sit in the shed in the garden talking to a camera, okay? Is that rational behavior? Spending hours like, yeah, I hate you, you know, is that rational? Buying things we know we don't need, okay? so. Um, people think that was always just accepted, but it wasn't, you know, um, it was something that um, people, you know, um, started to realize kind of like later on in the game. In fact, there are some people like her that still refuse to, you know, accept the um, veracity of uh, behavioral economics. Okay, uh, you know, uh, but I believe it is there, you know, this is part of us that like does things for reasons we don't even know. Anyway, so, uh, all I said to the guy was, you know, are you aware of uh, behavioral economics and actually how it says that we make choices that aren't for the best of us sometimes, you know, and they're not rational. And then he sort of went off on some kind of crazy like tangent about, you know, how, you know, like he hates economists and how um, like how the trouble with the world is uh, that young people, um, you know, uh, we sort of like uh, believe everything that we're told and if a celebrity you know that said said uh, that we i should buy something uh, we all will and uh, like i mean I, I so i then just calmly tried to say okay well uh i think that's always been a problem you know and i don't think we're any more swayed now than we ever were i think you know maybe you could make a case that people were more swayed by uh, the media and the government you know and i think that we probably did make more predictable choices as we have uh, the internet and you know we're realizing that other people like us exist i think we are probably starting to move away from just being swayed by kind of one thing um so you know but like he kept kind of talking over me and then i was just trying to say that that wasn't the point i was making all of this and he was just making his own you know and in the end i just said look mate you know like i can't have this conversation with you because you're just talking over me um and you, you um you're not even letting me finish the point that I'm trying to make, 
without making several others of your own. And that's the trouble with this Facebook thing. If somebody makes another point, then you have to address that one. So you kind of lose the point you were like initially making, um, much like many of these diatribes. Uh, and then you get kind of, you know, sort of taken down like a sojourn. Some, oh, I'm getting a phone call. Hello, mum. How are you? Yes, it's really good. Uh, could I phone you back in about five minutes, please, Sausage? Because I'm right in the middle of recording something. He is okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he had his cow pole uh, and his fever's down. But I'll like, like phone you back in a bit. All right, Sausage, bye-bye, bye. Bye. That was my mum. So uh, I think I'm going to leave that in there, unless there's any of the sounds. What was I saying? Ah, yeah, okay. So, like with the Facebook discussions, um, you often get drawn down other kind of alleys. So, you know, you make one point and then someone will kind of come back with, you know, um, often sort of ignoring uh, like the basic um, thrust of what you were saying in the first place, going, ah, but, you know, this, that and the other. It's like, okay, well, now I've got to address all of that as well. And then if you don't, you're seen as you start a conversation and then you're not open to changing your mind and you know like I've been accused of all of this kind of stuff it's like you know like if you start a conversation and then you uh, decide to end it maybe you're doing something wrong you know uh, but again you know with all of this you don't have to ask for, for permission if you don't want to do something then just like, stop it go okay well no um, and that's what I decided and I think I'm going to do that kind of more and more with Facebook if I can see that I'm being sucked into a discussion that is going nowhere I think for the sake of me and the other person I'm not saying you know that I'm you know I'm the only one that's kind of suffering in that it's, it is literally just best to end it uh, maybe we should like have a code word you know like pineapples or um, something um, spider crab arm okay uh, just something yeah so um we can just you know it's like time out yeah and then just you know uh, um see the other person who we're discussing with and going is this actually doing anything is this changing anything like do i still have love in my heart for you um irrespective of all of this shit I think if more of us did that, more of us fostered that kind of control in the moment, don't get personally attached to what we think and feel, you know, as much. I'm sure some people like I would disagree with that, but does it does it get you anywhere? Does it get society anywhere if it's constantly confrontation and constantly fighting? So I think I've kind of spoke about that, um, you know, ad infinitum. Uh, for now so uh, 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 there was a couple of other things that I just wanted uh, to say and that kind of goes back to value about how I think all of us think that we say something and then it must have value to other people and if it doesn't then they're a prick now you can't assume that what you're saying has value to anyone okay uh, like does it have to have value to anyone okay but I and mean, that's almost irrelevant because people think that what they say, like other people must agree with, if you don't, and there's something wrong with you, and everything we say must be listened to. So if, if you say something, it's like, you must listen to me. It's the same with this, you know, like, um, does listening to me just waffle on for like an hour or something have any value to you? I mean, uh, probably not, okay? Uh, but does it have value to me? And I would argue that it must do or else I wouldn't do it, would I? Okay, uh, so is that enough? I think it's enough. Just having value to you. Um, so if you feel that you need to say something, if you feel you need to creatively say something, if you feel that oh, you have, you know, an opinion now that you want to share, feel free to share it. Okay. I'm, I'm not saying that you know people shouldn't but you then just can't instantly assume that that's going to have value and other people will listen and agree you don't get to choose what you say um, how other people will respond to that okay and then if you're responding um, to that you can decide whether you agree with it whether you want to argue with it um, so you know and again 
there's a weird kind of like even as I even as I'm saying this, I can I can kind of feel my um, brain you know ticking over, and I can almost imagine other people commenting and going, yeah, but um, what if what they're saying is hateful? Okay, look, I'm aware that there's a contradiction even within this. Okay, uh, and this is what I'm saying about like uh, the broken robot, and I was probably even. You know, it's being being the broken robot then where I'm going, okay, well, we've got a right to an opinion and we can say it, but then we don't get to choose how it's how it's received. You know, is that a contradiction? You know, um, I mean, yes, uh, there's loads um, of contradiction and loads of cognitive dissonance surrounding this whole thing with opinions. Uh, and also non sequiturs, where, the, where things just don't logically add up. I'm aware of all of that and I'm probably like doing it now, okay? And I think that's where discussion comes in and other people going, okay, well, what about this? Um, and actually calmly talking about it and uh, dismantling each other people's words rather than who they are. Somebody can say something that you don't agree with but still be a great person that you could spend a lot of time with. But it's this thing of like, okay, well, you say that, you're a prick, you know. And again, like with these um, documentaries, some of the guys in, in, in that white power one are saying some incredibly odious things. Uh, but then she manages to tap into their humanity. And some of them are quite um, damaged, lonely people, you know. Again, I mean, there's another massive kind of like cog cognitive um, dissonance because what if those people are suffering from... Um, some form of mental illness like depression and uh, the way that they've learned to kind of tackle that is to use their hate and find kind of bonds with other people maybe all we're searching for is connections and these kind of racist types find a connection with other people but what is at the heart of it is they really hate themselves and they have a lot of depression problems it's weird that it seems a lot of people say again more on the left would see themselves in favour of helping people um, with depression and with mental health issues, yet only if they exhibit other characteristics that we like. So if they're um, wholly nice and they're depressed, we're on board. If they're depressed but they say things that are undesirable, fuck them. And it's just, it just does not add up, yeah? Um, in fact, maybe the, the biggest test of character is how we deal with people that we don't agree with and maybe how we deal with people we find odious. Can you look into the, the, the eyes or the heart of another individual and see the humanity? You know, um, I'll never forget uh, when I watched a little um, documentary, um, I think it was about serial killers. Uh, you know, it was kind of like fun, fun evening viewing. And it had this bit where um, a guy uh, I think it, you know, um, was like truly horrific. He 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 had, he had killed um, loads uh, loads of people. I think it was mainly women, uh, and was you know uh, um, was a complete shit uh, in his behaviour. Uh, and they had some footage from uh, the courthouse, uh, and everybody was given a minute or so um, just to read a personal statement, and all of the families. Um, just one after the other was just a wave of kind of anger and hate which is understandable okay and it was stuff like I hope that you die in prison I hope you get killed I hope you get beaten up all all of this sort of stuff okay I'm not saying they're wrong for that but that's what they were all saying and then this guy at the end he stands up he's got like white hair like white beard and I think it was his daughter who was killed and he says that you know, and I, um, it still makes me emotional. Uh, he says that he has he has always believed in things like forgiveness, um, and this uh, the serial killer has made you know has made it difficult for him, but he cannot bring himself to hate him, and he forgives him. And the thing that's interesting about all of this is when all of the preceding people. Um, would just um, wave after wave of hate, okay? Um, it, it was like water off a duck's back to the guy. Uh, when the guy 
finally, you know, at the end said that he uh, forgave him and showed some warmth. I mean, in a situation, I don't know how that guy had, had the strength because maybe I would give in to the hate. But the killer's response to the old fella saying that he forgave him is he just basically just starts crying. He like gets uh, this monster. I think every, every, every conceivable notion that we have of calling somebody a monster like this guy exhibits the um, killer. But the dad somehow found a way to forgive him. And it just floored me because it's the only thing that got a reaction out of the other guy. Now, who's to say who was right in that situation and who was wrong? I don't know, but I can only control my own actions and I think I'm gonna try as best I can to be more on the loving end. And m maybe, you know, uh, it's something we could all like take on board. Or else, <clears throat> no, I'm just joking. Uh, there's one more point I wanted to make. I've been kind of waffling a lot. I think I've spoken all about this value. But uh, the very last point that uh, I wanted to make is about Facebook in general um, and how I think we've all just become an uh, Oprah Winfrey audience. Okay, now what I mean by that is often um, in an Oprah Winfrey audience, someone will spew some um, trite platitude. Oh, that's my stomach, I'm obviously hungry. Um, uh, somebody will spew some some trite platitude and then the audience will erupt with applause like ah yeah it's amazing okay uh but you know it's just sophistry half the time and it's just empty and it's banal and um when you analyze it you think okay well that like doesn't add up or you like you you've seen that person kind of exhibit behaviors that you think okay well you've just completely contradicted what you've said yeah so you know, like, but um, the audience is already applauded by that point, okay? And, I, and, I'm, and I'm starting to think, are we just becoming an Oprah Winfrey audience where we're saying things for our audience? We're saying things we know people will like and love and share. And is it actually what we really feel? Is it true? Or are we just doing it because um, we want that validation? Or we want the likes? Um, a classic example of that is there's some people I know that I'm going to call them feminizers who are real feminists on the surface but I happen to know are like real shits with women and you know they're into this whole thing like the game and you know pick up artistry you know and all of that stuff but like if you look at their Facebook posts they're all like you know um women are amazing, you know, I'm sort of fully kind of a behind women, you know, and sort of like third wave feminism, like, and all of that, but really, like, they're not at all, you know, which is why they're feminizers. Um, uh, they use that just to get laid more. Uh, but I see the amount of people like her that like their posts and they get shared, you know, and those kind of things. And I just think to myself, does no one else see that? Like, they must be aware of what they're like. Is it that the opinion, so maybe this is the opposite of what I'm saying, where that person's opinion is more important than the person. And I suppose what I'm arguing for is maybe the person is more important than the opinion. Now that's what I should call this thing. Um, the person is more important than the opinion. Um, because you can say all, all of the right things, but be a complete shit. Or you can say all of the wrong things and be a really great um, person and maybe it's actions that are the defining thing and I've done plenty of things that I'm ashamed of and a shit and I will hold my hand up to them but you know every day we're trying to move forward but perhaps it's easier to have um, it's easier to have opinions than to live up to them and maybe it's the actions that are more important and I think I'm going to leave you with this it's a quote by Henry Rollins it's one of my favorite quotes which is untested knowledge is just bullshit so I think that's something that I really agree with and I should probably end this because I could feel my um, tummy rumbling so you know unless you want an hour of my um, stomach gurgling we're gonna end it end it there with the person is more important than the opinion so uh, thanks for listening I hope 
um, this was of some value to you. Uh, I hope that the audio and the picture quality is good. Uh, and I would really love to do this with another human being rather than just do it myself. I am going to do one of these a week, even if it's just me. And even if I'm just talking to myself and sifting through ideas in my own head, then that, that has value to me. So peace out.